The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the March 21st, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A sea of green out here. We've got all the, well, the XLC just went uh, negative by one penny out there, two pennies right now. But otherwise, all the other sectors inside the S&P 500 trading the upside along with the indices out there. Dow's up 315, eight tenths, half percent for the S&P, 27 points, eight tenths for the NASDAQ, 144, one and four tenths for the Russell, 29, three percent for the semis. That's 151 point move there. Tranny's up 171. Gold's up 11 bucks. Silver down 14 cents. Lights we crude off a buck 79. Natural gas down three cents. 30 year treasury put out at 118.22. Now the leaders in the clubhouse to the upside. Dollar wise, micro strategy 94 bucks. Broadcom 103. Lamb Research 45. Super Micro 40. Argenix SE up 41 bucks. Mercado Libre 23. To the downside, it is five below. But it's not just five below, it's 29 below five. And Accenture's down 28. Faxet is down 26. Tor Maline Bio down 17. Equinix is off 11. And Darden Restaurants down 9.99. That's nearly a 6% move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Where are we going to begin our day? Well, let's just take a look at, um, well, first, if we take a look at equity futures, we're at new all-time highs. If we take a look at the Gideon's Mini, NQ, and the uh, Dow, if we take a look at the Yes Mini, uh, this is price. The first one is going to be in dollars. The next one's going to be euros, then Great British Pound, and then we've got the Japanese yen. We are at new all-time highs in all currencies. It's a worldwide, it's a global rally, at least inside the Yes Mini. The NQ, it's made a new all-time high today, but it hasn't taken out that swing point uh, from March the 8th. When I say taken out, I mean close above it. But we have formed a new all-time high in the NQ in terms of uh, euros, in terms of dollars, uh, in terms of, yep, Great British Pounds, and, and certainly in terms of uh, the yen out there. And the same thing is true with regard to the Dow. So picking the top here, be careful. You've got to understand that on everybody's screens and people over in Europe, they're thinking in terms of their currency. People in Japan, they're thinking of their currencies. These are not sellers out there. So just be careful on the short side or certainly be taking a look at some intraday signals. We'll certainly take a look at those or try to take a look at those during the show. So that's what we know. If we take a look at just um, the Dow itself. The Dow price and even more currencies. You can see we're at new all-time highs in terms of uh, dollars, euros, yen, Aussie dollars, Swedish corona, uh, the Great British Pound, Swiss franc, not the Chinese yuan, but we did hit a new all-time high today in the Canadian loonie out there. So again, this is a global rally. You've got to realize that those folks over in that country are thinking in terms of their currencies out here. This is a global rally that is going on. It should continue. That doesn't mean we're not going to have some type of top. But there's no reason at this stage here for this not to continue. If we take a look at the worldwide 
and, and the, some of the primary indices that are out there. So we know we're at new all-time highs in terms of the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ tick to a new all-time high today. If we look at the Shanghai, the Shanghai is not anywhere near its new uh, an all-time high. The Nikkei, on the other hand, is. So there's money that is flowing into the Nikkei as well as into Japan, as well as inside the U.S. markets. Hang Seng. Not even close. The FTSE, not even close. In order for the FTSE, which is trading out at 78.86, it's got a tick above 8,047. Not that it can't, but it isn't. And in the Australian dollars, we made a all-time high about two weeks ago. The DAX, though, is also at a new all-time high. So what this also is telling me is we don't just have global capital flowing just into the U.S. out there. And that's where I... I'm going to also say that we should anticipate some type of top. It's just not here today or does not appear to be here today. And uh, probably go into the end of the month moving into new all-time highs out there. But we'll just simply pay attention to the patterns. But this is important to know. If we only saw global capital flowing into the U.S. and we saw that the U.S. indices were at new all-time highs in all those currencies, then that would be uh, then we'd be saying, man, I don't see any kind of a top out here at all. Or certainly, they would be short-lived, like two days worth of retracements out there. If we take a look at Goldilocks here, uh, gold in a new in a, in gold in terms of dollars, euros, and pounds has ticked to a new all-time high today. We've also got that same set of charts, so to speak, just in the GLD for those folks that don't have access. Um, but we can see new all-time highs were formed there. However, the issue with regard to gold uh, there is really... Um that so far, its TD9 count tops are holding. When I say TD9 count tops, let's just go ahead and switch screens out here. And we'll take a look at this because it's going to impact both uh, gold and the GDX. So we'll switch over to the proper set of screens, not the NQ, but we'll switch over to this set of screens for right now. So here on the upper left-hand side, what we've got is you've got a TD9 count top that formed inside of gold on March the 8th. The only way for gold to negate that uh, pattern would be to close above that high, which is 2203. We can also see, let me just open this up just a tad. We have ticked to a, um, I got ABC, you know, I'm going to hold off on calling this a wave number seven uh, top out there. We've got the TD9 that's already in place out here. Now, what we can see, here would be the potential bullish piece on the on the pullback so far. And that is that price has made its way back down to a potential support level. You've got the center of its profile, and you've got that oscillator and change line. That's at 217040 to be exact out there. If gold closes below 2171, that's what we'll call it out here. That could be signaling to you and I it's getting ready to make a move down to 2109 or even 2033 out there. If we take a look at the, the GDX, the GDX uh, still maintains its TD9 count top. In order to negate that signal, we need to see a close above 3049 out there. Uh, its level of support or its first level of support is at 2994. Below that would be about 2951. And then it would be the zone, which would be 2872 to 2913. If I take a look at silver out here, silver's got, I think this might be a, an A to B equals CD pattern. It'd be pretty extended. Uh, I just don't know about this retracement. I'm taking a look where my cursor is at on the uh, bottom right out there. But regardless, right now, the key level to be watching in silver, you'd have to say, would be that oscillator and change line. We haven't seen price close below that since February 28th out there. So it being 24.92, the top of the profile is 25.51. But we'll just keep it at 24.90. You see silver close below 24.90, you're going to be staring at 24.36. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. 
And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the intraday charts here for Goldilocks. When an instrument pulls back to support on a daily time frame, if that support area is going to hold, what we like to see are some uh, intraday charts, some shorter-term time frame charts that show bottoming patterns and then watch to see if resistance levels take out. Well, uh, take off. So, so here I've got a five-hour, four-hour, a two-hour, 60-minute, 30-minute, 15, and a 10-minute. The only time frame that is a bottom signal right now worth watching is the 15-minute time frame chart. So this next um, bar does not complete until 11:30. It's 11:18. I don't know if uh, gold's going to tick below that, but right now, just use the low of the day, which is 21.70.80. If we see a close below that on a 15-minute basis, I'm not referring to by 11:30. I'm referring to after 11:30. So the first would be 11:45. If we see a close below that, that's going to suggest that gold should pull back towards 21.59. 21.59 is the bottom of its uh, four-hour. Profile level and 2159 is the TD9 count breakout level for the 30 minute time frame. So you want to watch that level. Again, is that's assuming that gold doesn't tick below this between now and 1230, this being 21780. So that's what I'd be watching for out there. Now I had mentioned during the uh, 11 a.m. update that there's a possibility here. I've drawn in on a daily time frame chart for uh, the U.S. dollar index, a potential of an A to B equals CD to the upside. Trying to identify that C point on any type of A to B equals CD is is pretty difficult to do, or at least I will say it's very difficult for me to do. However, when it gets clear, when you see something that's clear, then it kind of adds to that idea, oh, well, maybe it is right here right now. So when I say clear, I'm referring to the pullback inside the U.S. dollar index, which found support at the top of that daily profile, which is at 102.90. Now, if we do see a close of 103.81, that will trigger the A to B equals CD to the upside pattern, and that would uh, give us a price projection of 104.69 out there. Well, if this on Unfolds, then gold is most certainly going to make its move down uh, towards that 2109 level out there. The issue with regard to being able to call the U.S. dollar index making an A to B equal CD pattern is really that weekly time frame chart. And that weekly time frame chart is crystal clear with regard to the upper, to the rising and the falling trend lines out there. We can see that that falling or descending trend line is really acted as resistance. And we're back into it as we speak this week, too. So if price is able to close above this level, the question is, what is this level? I'd say it's going to be about the 103.81 area. 
maybe 103.96, something right around there. But if we do close above 103.81, it's really signaling to you and I that, geez, gold, uh, gold that the U.S. dollar index get ready to take out a significant level of resistance. Now, until it happens, right, I don't know whether it's going to happen or not. But if it does, then we're looking at a move not just to 104.69. We're probably looking at a move to 105.95. That B to C retracement here, less than a 0.618. Typically, you do more than a 1 to 1. A to B equals CD. 105.20 would be the 1.27. 105.95 is the top of that weekly uh, profile out there. So watch 103.81 and put this in conjunction or put this together with regard to the activity going on inside of gold. Then you can just simply apply that to the mining charts out there as well. So hopefully that's a good overview uh, for you. With regard to the indices, before I go take a look at Starbucks and Apple and see if any other uh, requests have come in out here, just to kind of see, is the move real? Uh, that we're taking a look at. In order to answer that question, what I'd like to do is take a look at what the equal weighted ETFs are doing. So we're going to flip over to those. And by equal weighted ETFs, folks, Q's, for example, you've got the top 10 that represent, you know, probably 40 to 50 percent of the overall indice. Well, here they represent 1 percent. I think there's maybe 108 instruments inside the uh, uh, Q's or something like that. So it's an equal weighting out here. So we take a look at QQEW. It has ticked to a new all time high, but it hasn't taken out the um hasn't taken out that swing point which created a sell the d point pattern back on uh, april i'm um, sorry march the 8th out there so that high is 124.67 today we got to a high of 124.78 we're back up below that so the equal weighted etf is really behaving the exact same way as the weighted etf that's going to be important because we're going to go take a look at apple the justice or injustice department filing uh, some kind of suit uh, in some states 16 states or so so uh, apple has sold off as we result of that if we take a look at the equal weighted s p 500 the rsp out there we're at new all-time highs it's negating its td9 count top uh the uh, spy itself is negating uh its top its topping pattern as well uh so everything is in in can is uh, in sync there the same thing with regard to the equal weighted etf for the dow as well as the dow diamond so everything is in sync here and really the cues are in sync neither have really taken out that resistance uh, point that we were taking a look at okay what else is there any Anything else that I can share with you with regard to the indices? Uh, the only other thing I can think of right now would be just simply to go back, and I'll do that right now, uh, and then we'll go on to some requests out here, is just take a look at the intraday charts for the NQ. We were taking a look at the intraday charts for Goldilocks. Let's do the same for the NQ out here. Oh, I know what else I can do. Before I even do that, let's go take a look at the cash indices. Let's go see what the cash, the daily cash indice charts are showing us. Well, here, if we take a look at the Dow, uh, the Dow has negated its roads momentum indicator top. It did that yesterday. Uh, the S&P 500 doing the same as we speak today and yesterday. Uh, the NDX 100, again, still has that roads momentum indicator top. It requires a close above. Uh, the high, which is 18,41673. The Russell 2000 still maintains its TD9 count top. It's trading into its uh, swing point for back on March 8th. They close above 21.16. We'll negate that signal out there. The semiconductors having the biggest move today, a little over 3%. And what they've done is they've overtaken right now at this stage of the game, they've gotten above that green oscillator and change line. A close above that green oscillator and change line. It's currently printed at 49.42, called 49.43. A close above that is going to suggest that price wants to make a run for that March 8th high. That's up at 52.17. If price closes back below it, well, then it's not a given that that's what its intent is. So the semis still have their roads to indicator top, as do the transports. Well, the transports are now above a green oscillator and change line. And I would say if the transports can close above 15,983.34, we're at 15,974. But a close above 15,983.34 is going to actually, no, it won't trigger an A to B equals CD pattern, but it will trigger a consolidation measured move breakout. All that that really is telling us is that price should get back to its all time high and that roads meant to indicator signal. The NASDAQ composite, much like the NASDAQ 100, it would require today a close above 16,449.00. 70 to negate its roads to indicator uh, top out there. And if you take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, just negated two tops, roads to indicator top, as well as a TD9 count. So overall, with regard to the indices, again, it's only the NASDAQ and the semis here, which is a reason to pay attention because they still have their tops that are in place out there. Um, now, let's go flip over. 
I'm going to close these out and then take a look at the NQ charts. We'll do that going to this break, and then we'll start taking, when we come back from the break, we'll start taking a look at the couple requests that have come in. So let's get to the uh, intraday charts out here. Give me a moment to switch this from gold to the NQ. I believe it is the uh, five-hour time frame chart that has the TD9 count top out here. I think that was the only top. Um, but let's let's just confirm that here. Momentarily, these charts will populate it. And really, I'm kind of focused right now. My eyes of focus will be on the five-hour time frame. That's the uh, second one to the right on the upper left-hand side. So we'll give this a moment here just to populate. Come on, baby. And I believe we're going to see a TD9 count top out there. Yes, we are. Now, so this is cool because what you want to watch is that high. That high of that pattern is up at uh, 18. 674.75. If you see the NQ close above that, odds favor, we're head high. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, still all the U.S. indices trade to the upside and all the sectors now inside the S&P 500. We've only got three requests in the uh, system so far, so if you would like me to take a look at something, you've still got time to send me an email, steve at tfn.com, and the phone lines are open. First request coming in from Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den wants to uh, switch from Dunkin' Donuts to Starbucks. So let's go take a look at Starbucks out here. What has Starbucks done? Well, yesterday, what price did was closed above the top of its daily profile. The daily profile is at 92, is 92, uh, 10. Right now we're trading at 92.29. If Starbucks can close the day again above 92.10, what you have is a profile change in trend signal. That would suggest to move up to 95.10, the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. However, what I would add out here is prices really struggled recently at this zone. So the high that has formed out here, the form that is high, has formed out here, is at um, the trading session from March the 11th. And that high is 92.96. So I would say if price can close above, 92.10 will still give you a profile change in trend. But I would say you're not getting up to 95.10 until you can see it close above the 92.96 level. That's the daily time frame. I do not have a bottom pattern. What I have is a got a bottom pattern that failed. That was the TD9 count bottom pattern. And that failed on the trading day of March 15th. But still, profile change in trend says, okay, you got some potential more rally up towards that 95.10 level. Okay, the weekly time frame chart. Uh, price has a TD9 count bottom. It's actually got two of them out here. One was negated, the most recent one, which was January 19th. That was negated two weeks ago. Uh, there's another one, and it's got a swing point from October the 6th. Now, that swing point has volume of 33 million shares. It was closed into that swing point two weeks ago with 35 million shares, slightly more volume. Last week was with 51 million shares. The low of that swing has not been tested, Steve-O. I would say that that is a likely outcome. I wouldn't say that's a likely outcome with price being above the top of its daily profile. So we could just be looking at a counter trend move inside of Starbucks. Uh, unless price is able to close above that swing point from October 6th, Close above that high, 93.34, with less than 33 million shares, which would be a test and rejection on lighter volume. And this week, you are at 20 million shares, so it's a possibility, but it's got to also overtake that red oscillator and change line. So until it does that, I'm suggesting that what uh, Starbucks wants to do on a weekly basis, at least go test that swing point. Now, here's where it can get real troublesome over the course of the next week or so. If Starbucks starts to really sell off here, and by sell off, I'm talking about closing below the low from October of 2023. That's the 89.21 level, which has volume of 127 million shares. And this month, we've already done 115 million shares. So it seems to me like we're going to at least going to at least be able to do 127 million shares. And if it were to close below that. I'm not saying that it will. And right now, I'm definitely not saying that it will. But just keep your eye out for that possibility. If it does, you'd have an A to B equals CD to the downside for Starbucks. So, Duncan, I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for the request. Let's go out to Denver, Colorado and speak with Rich. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure, as always. Um, my question is about CNX Resources. Yes. Uh, they are natural gas primarily. And I'm wondering, based on your seasonality of looking at uh, various charts, what do you see for natural gas and perhaps CNX in particular? So great question. They actual I actually do have the data for CNX. So we can put that up, which is perhaps more important for you. So you asked about seasonality. We're going to put these charts up on our screen here. Now, let me see how much data we actually have. So we have 24 years worth of data, uh, Ron. And this red vertical line right now, well, let me do this here. I'm going to untrend it for a moment. This red vertical line shows us where we're at right now. And I know there might be like a minute delay or something like that. So hopefully this is populated up on your chart on Tiger TV if you're following along. But you are in the favorable seasonal cycle time frame for CNX Resources Corporation. Now, natural gas, Ron, has not been doing much. So maybe this has more than just natural gas in it or there's something else because so you're so first to answer your question it's favorable seasonal cycle for this has been starts around oh, at least over the last 24 years starts right around january the 20th and doesn't come to an end until about the uh, first week of june out there so any questions about this seasonality chart before i close it down uh no uh, they also are into uh pipelines 
they have 2,400 miles of pipeline in the country, uh, so they're able to move the, the natural gas around. Uh, they also move methane around, which I know is a, an ugly subject in this country because of air pollution. Yeah, so I, you know what I would do is, so I'm trying to pull up the um, UN, uh, the uh, natural gas charts, and for some reason, they've had problems before, and I've had them correct it. Um, so right now, with regard to natural gas, natural gas really only has kind of like two favorable months out here. Now, I'm, I'm showing the UNG, and I've got 16 years worth of data, and those favorable months are uh, basically January, April, um, and, and maybe a little bit inside of uh, June out there. So I don't think that it is the seasonal chart of natural gas that uh, this instrument, CNX, is following along out there. But let's take a look at what its charts are doing, what the charts are communicating to you and I. And we'll start with the longer term. We'll start with the monthly chart. So the monthly chart, prices trade above profile resistance, which would be down at 1809. It's trading above its green oscillator and change line. That's at 2116. So what we know on a monthly time frame, Ron, is that this has a, a rich, this has a rising price oscillator above zero. So its next resistance point, and there are two of them, it's trading into a swing point from October of 2023. Volume there was 56 million shares. We're into it this month with 46 million and we still have several days worth of trading so it sounds to me like it's pushing into that swing point with volume that is telling us that it should go target its high and its high is 2368 there's another high that's also important but that has volume of 86 million shares again this month we're only into that with 46 and that high is from the trading session of june of 2022 and that's another resistance level and that's up at 2421 so your resistance between 2421 and 20 uh, 368. Any questions about the monthly chart? No. Weekly chart. Again, much like the monthly, Rich, we are trading above uh, the oscillator and change line at 2141, the top of its profile at 2194. This suggests going after its high out there. Uh, if we take a look at the daily time frame, we do not have any kind of a topping pattern out here. I could draw in a couple of different A to B equals CD patterns. That doesn't really matter. Everything is telling us that this wants to move higher. And the daily resistance level would be 23. 40 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at daily, weekly, and monthly. I'll add one more chart for you, and that would be the 30-minute time frame, just to do kind of like the play-by-play, -play, where we at at 11.38 in the morning. And where we're at at 11.38 in the morning is that by 12 noon, you're going to get a TD9 count top. And that suggests you should see at least a small retracement. Uh, but if no matter, but that's what it suggests. I'd mark down the high, whatever the high comes in at by 12 noon. If price closes above that, that shows that tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside. Richard, we're going to the uh, hard break right here. You're welcome to hold on if you've got some questions. If not, uh, I'll look forward to your next call. But we'll be right back. Steve Rhodes with TFN. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, 
Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All righty, let's get to our request out here. The first one, uh, well, really the second one. The first one was uh, Starbucks. The second one uh, for John C. The Tiger's Den wants to take a look at Apple. So Apple right now today is going to go ahead and it looks like it's going to confirm a sell the D point pattern. So the A to B equals CD. It was a 1 to 1.272 or 1 to 1.61. There's your A to B. We just moved this over to that C point. And that was about a 70, uh, 7.786 retracement. You got the bear sash candle today, so you got to sell the D point pattern. Now, price is sitting at a key level of support. And that's that red oscillator and change line. Red and green have different meanings. Red, a close below, it says we have a falling price oscillator below zero. So price would need to close below today, 172 and a quarter. If it does that, well, what it's going to signal is we're going to get back to 169.95. The question is, how is price doing or what's volume doing as it moves into that swing point for March 7? Only 71 million shares there. So far today, this has done 45 million shares in just over two hours of trading. So Apple is pulling back with volume. However, support is support until support fails. We look at the weekly time frame chart. Apple's just pulling back and testing its buy zone. It's a bullish structured profile. Not much more that I can see here inside of Apple. Let's take a look at its uh, dance steps out here. Dance steps, how many consecutive days higher? How many consecutive days lower out there? Well, in the case of Apple, this had seven consecutive days of the downside back on March the 7th. Three-day rally, one-day pullback, three-day rally. Is this just a one-day pullback? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. I suspect it is more than just a one-day pullback inside of Apple, but that's just a suspicion. First, uh, we need to see uh, the uh, support levels fail. Uh, but to the downside, we can see that uh, you know this could easily open up for a multiple-day move to the downside inside of Apple out there. What else do we have for Apple? The only other thing that I can pull over right now, John, to take a look at would be the intraday chart, a 30-minute time frame, which has a Rhodes Mentum and TD9 count top. Uh, price broke through key levels of support, two breakout levels, profile areas out there, and I don't see a bottom pattern as we speak. So this is really going to be all about the daily oscillator and change line. I know I didn't look at all the intraday charts out there, but, um, but I think we've looked at enough. So it's really going to be all about whether or not support holds. And it could hold. Don't know whether it will or it won't. Uh, but that's uh, between that's a, in the levels of 172 and a quarter to the preference would be a close back of a 172.88 out there. So, John, see, that's what I see when I take a look at the Apple charts. I hope that helps you out. Dan wanted to take a look at fuel cell out here. FCEL is a ticker symbol. Beautiful looking charts out there. Why is it beautiful, Stevie? Well, you've got a TD sequential a signal that formed back on March the 13th. That required a close above the any candle four bars earlier well you most certainly did that yesterday i don't even have to go back and look at anything else and right now what price is trying to do is take out the top of its daily profile so ideally 
uh, you would see two closes above a buck twenty. If you see two closes above buck twenty, well, that says we at least get to buck twenty five. So let's make it like this. Let's see two closes above a buck twenty five, which happens to be the center of its weekly profile. As we speak right now at eleven forty five in the morning, we have a teeny a, a teeny sequential buy signal on a daily, a Rhodes momentum indicator buy pattern on the weekly inside a bullish structured profile. So that buck and a quarter, and we've got a TD nine count bottom on the uh, monthly time frame chart. So there's no doubt with regard to technical patterns out there, at least the ones that Stevie uses, that you've got nice bottom patterns for a fuel cell. So watch that, uh, what was it, I think a buck 25 level out there. That's really what you're looking at. If price is unable to do that and it closes with inside its profile, you've got bottom signals and just price just kind of chugging around out there. But fuel cell charts here, they are issuing a buy order. However, the 30-minute the chart says I'd like to take a time out if you're wondering why is price pulling back and testing the top of that uh, daily profile. Well, it's really that 30-minute time frame chart that's causing all of the problems out there. And those problems are a TD nine count top. That TD nine count top completes here in the next uh, 14 minutes. That would suggest that price at least pulls back to test support. And support is uh, about the buck 17, buck 18 level out there. Of course, you can see other uh, support areas like one at 115, one at 113, and one at 109. But I'll be, you'd like to see the smaller one, the shallow retracement back to the 118 area, and then price take off from there. So that's what I see when I take a look at FCEL. And Dan, thanks so much for the request out there. Mohammed wants to take a look at ticker symbol P double D out there. So let's pull that up. I think that's pin duo duo, uh, which is. Uh, you know, my, my granddaughter uses that to, uh, no, this is PDD Holdings, not Pin Duo Duo. Okay, let's just stick with this one. So this is a PDD Holdings out here. And what do we see? So what do we see? The weekly time frame chart is one that sticks out at Stevie right now, Mohammed. And the reason it sticks out is because we've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And price moved lower, and I don't have any kind of a buy signal. And what's transpired this week is price has been all over the place, right? But what it did was it ran into resistance in the weekly time frame. Those weekly profile levels like green oscillator and change line. So it's kind of suggesting to me that it, because of no bottom pattern on the uh, weekly time frame yet, that perhaps this wants lower price. So let's take a look at what the daily time frame time day, daily time frame charts have done out here. First, you had a beautiful Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern that was confirmed on March the 12th. You had a bullish reversal candle that was the bull separating line candle formation. Then price gets above uh, profile levels. That looks really good, and it runs into its second level of resistance. And that second level of res well, no. No, that's not it. That's not it. Okay, so I'm not sure on a daily basis. I can't give you the reason why price stopped where it did. What I can do, though, is on a daily basis, and this is important, more important uh, for you, right now is what price is pulling back to. It's testing that red oscillator and change on it, 122.33. Mohammed, a close below that will get 118.33. And a price close below 118.33, and you're headed all the way back down to that March 8th low. That would be anywhere, or the March 8th candle, anywhere between 108.87 and 116.06 out there. So that's the daily time frame. Weekly time frame we talked about, no bottom signal. And on a monthly time frame, the area to be watching, I would say here would be about 115.62 or thereabouts. If price were to close below that, you'd see a further move lower. 99.50 would be that next uh, logical price target. So watch 122.32 and then 118.33 for your next decisions. If I look at a 30 minute time frame chart for uh, PDD holdings out here, this um, is trading below its breakout level, 125.45. I don't see a bottom signal. So there is pressure most certainly to the uh, downside out there. So I hope that helped you out with regard to PDD. Thanks so much for writing in. Jane wanted to take like, Coinbase out there. C-O-I-N is the ticker symbol. So let's pull that up on our screen. We take a look at Coinbase. What is it doing? It is trading above the top of its daily profile. It it's green oscillator and change line looks pretty bullish. But in order to really get bullish out here, you'd like to see it close above its swing point. That's a swing point for March 11th, and that is up at 271.65. Now, the volume on that swing day was 20 million shares. Today, in the first couple hours of trading, you're at about 10 million shares. So price is moving into that swing with volume. The question is, can it close above it? If it does close above 271.65, you're 271.23, you're off to the races to the upside. On the weekly time frame chart, 
really the same thing. If you can close above, I'm sure it's probably the same level out there. It is at two seven. No, it's two seventy six thirty eight. So a weekly close above two seventy six thirty eight out. Uh, two seventy one sixty five. I'm sorry, two seventy one sixty five. It is the same number out there. So close above that is going to Jane tell you that Coinbase wants to get up to three twenty three. Three twenty three is where Coinbase broke down. We come back for this break to finish out the show. We're going to take a look at Bitcoin, AAP, and PayPal. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of Basil's educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back. We take a look at the uh, Bitcoin chart out here. What we can see is that uh, on a daily time frame, uh, this is the March contract. Probably we should be looking at April. Maybe. Let me just switch this over to see what the daily BTC 0424 out here. Uh, let me see what Bitcoin. So the same thing. We got a uh, Bitcoin on a daily time frame uh, formed a road's momentum indicator top. And right now, price is trading with inside its uh, profile. It's got support at 66, 631 and resists up at 75, 286. I'm sure there's probably on the April contract here. I'm going to switch this over to the 120 minute time frame chart is what I'm looking at. It's got a TD9 count top. So I want to be able to, if, if in fact you're going to see some type of rally out here in Bitcoin, you need to see a close above 69.110 on a two-hour time frame. Otherwise, price should go target 66.727. Let's take a look at AAP for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, AAP right now, what do we have out here? You've got a TD9 count top that's going to form today and will complete tomorrow. This suggests that we should see 
see price pull back to support. Its first level of support would be around $82 and change out there. The weekly time frame looks very bullish. It's got an A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, looks like it wants to continue to trade higher. So we'd call AAP at this stage here nothing more than just a bit of a short-term uh, top. Monthly chart looks pretty good because you've got a profile change in trend signal at the uh, moment out there, S&P. So that's what I see when I take a look at AAP. Anticipate at least some type of short-term top to form by tomorrow. If we take a look at that next request, which was for PayPal. PayPal is going to go ahead and form a TD9 count top today, complete that pattern tomorrow. That suggests that price should pull back to support. For PayPal, that's at 64.76. Weekly time frame chart looks good in that it's trading above the top of its uh, profile. It's trading into a swing point that has volume of 147 million shares with only 43 million shares. Okay, so uh, I'd say the daily TD9 count pattern should result in at least some type of retracement out there, and you've got a consolidation on the monthly time frame. Folks, thank you for all those requests. Please join me tomorrow at 8 a.m. I'm going to record tomorrow's show between 8 and 9 so that I can get over to Naples and celebrate my mother-in-law's 96th birthday. I was off by a week. Last week, I had other family that came in town to uh, stay with us. And uh, so please join me tomorrow between 8 and 9. Of course, that show will be archived and recorded and replayed between the 11 and 12 hour. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. Look forward to seeing you on fabulous and fantastic Friday.